Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Taco Ninja Adventure. It's going to be on Kickstarter, and it is a game in which you're going to be playing two to six players. It takes about 30 to maybe 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 and up. It takes about five minutes to learn, though. In the game, you're basically going to be choosing uh, different Taco Ninjas, and you're going to be utilizing their special abilities, as well as rolling to try and do attack damage to other ninjas. Now, you're going to win by wiping out your opponent's ninjas, and you can play uh, 2v2, you can play three players and everybody gets two, two tacos, or you can play up to six players in which everybody's gonna get their own. And it has some interesting aspects to it. It feels a little bit like Yahtzee, it feels a little bit like, uh, oh, well, tableau management, and you're gonna be able to learn different cards that let you use different abilities, as well as it has item cards that are basically like instant take that, so are gonna involve uh, being able to attack and then also draw a card, or rolling twice. Different cards will prevent spicy damage, which I'll explain, but the objective is basically to roll and uh, out damage your opponents before they can out damage you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards, as well as how to set the game up. So here we have the game Taco Ninja Adventure, and everything that's going to be included, and as you can see, you're gonna be getting a bunch of different sets of cards, whether they be attack cards, the tacos themselves, the item cards, you're going to be getting these uh, player reference cards, and then of course a bag for your cards and some dice which you'll be utilizing, along with some specific player specified cubes and uh, your life trackers and life total cubes, so you're going to be utilizing these. So here is the setup for the game, as you can see, the three attack cards are going to be dealt out of this attack deck, and you're going to shuffle both of these decks, you're going to deal each ninja two item cards, and then you're going to also select two ninjas for each player, when you select them, you're simply going to be putting them right over here and then removing the other ninjas. These two specific ninjas have a cube that can uh, influence the game in a specific way by either giving them more attack or preventing damage from them. And then of course you can give every player, every team, one of these cards to keep track of your damage. And then uh, put them up here in front of where the dojo is, because there's going to be two areas, and we have the, uh, uh, the attacking area and of course the dojo area, where you're going to be buying different things and uh, learning new skills and whatnot. So that is pretty much how you set up the game and what it looks like. Alright, let's come up and I'll explain how a turn works. So a turn for Taco Ninja Adventure is pretty simple. What you're going to do is either simply roll by uh, taking your five die you're going to be getting in the game and uh, trying to make combinations. Now I'll tell you, I'll tell you on your, prefer your reference card here, three, four of a kind, five of a kind, and a full house. These are the way you do damage. And then the base healing. It says a small straight will heal you for two and a large straight will heal you for four. These are the base attacks you can start with with your tacos. However, on your turn you can simply choose not to attack and then send your ninja into the dojo. When you send them into the dojo, they have two different things they can do. They can draw an item card, which is just drawing an item card from the deck. They do different things. Or you can learn a skill. Now, there's two types of skills. There's single turn skills, like this one here. Whenever you pull off a three of a kind, it's a plus three more damage, and it's also a spicy attack. Or uh, you can pull a two turn skill off, which is going to take two, tur two turns to learn. Uh, this one here says whenever you have a three, uh, th uh, three of a kind, it's minus two, so two damage. And then whenever you do a four of a kind, it's an extra minus five. And these are cumulative attacks, so they increase the more you have of them. One is spicy, one is not. And it'll take you an extra turn. But when you have that extra turn while you're learning it, you can still draw a card from the deck. So every time you're in the dojo, every turn you're in the dojo, you can draw a card. If all of your characters are in the dojo, though, everybody takes damage uh, equal to whatever damage they bring, one player, one taco is being dealt and if not if there's only one you, you can they can select uh, which one they can select the one that's out, uh, out of the dojo to hit so that's the basic idea, rolling to fight, moving back into the dojo, learning skills, drawing items, and then you pass your turn after you decide to do one of those things, and the next player will get to go, and it'll go back and forth between, in a two-player game, between the uh, four different tacos, and once uh, all, four takes, all four tacos take their turn, the order will switch. The person who went second will go first, and so that player will actually get two turns in a row, which is kind of interesting as well. You can utilize item cards in your hand whenever you want, uh, per, and you can also trade them, provided that both of your ninjas are in the same location, and that'll also work with a team variant as well. And that's the basic idea. Try and nuke your opponent's tacos down to zero health points. If you can do that, you win the game. All right, I'll show you a couple turns. Okay, so we're back to the game, and as you can see, we have chosen two ninjas for each player. We're playing a two-player game, and we also have our two items for each player as well. Let's go ahead and reveal these items just to give you guys an idea. Normally, these are going to be hidden cards that only uh, you get to see uh, based on the ninjas that you control. And, of course, they have their player reference cards, and the attacks are out and ready to use. So the first thing that will happen is we'll decide who goes first. We'll simply start with the Ancient Taco. Let's go ahead and read all these abilities. The first one says, when drawing an item card, roll twice. If a three of a kind is rolled, draw 
draw an extra item card. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, this one over here says when you land an attack, if a six is included in the final selection of the die, draw an extra, uh, draw an item card. Ooh, that's good as well. Nerdy Taco, attack cards take one less turn to learn. So instead of uh, taking two turns for one of these guys here, it will just take one. Um, but let's see, but you must spend at least one turn in the dojo to learn an attack. So with this one here, it's still going to cost you one turn. You can only learn two attacks. All right, this one here says when you land an attack, you heal yourself or your teammate for plus two. So that's a nice way of uh, gaining health as you're attacking. All right, so the ancient talk is going to go ahead and start. And they're just simply going to uh, show you how to attack. So we could choose to either go back to the dojo and learn or draw or attack. I'm going to go ahead and attack the fire taco. So I'm going to roll the dice here. I need to get a three, four, or five of a kind or a full house because I don't really need a straight right now. So right here I got, it uh, looks like a small straight and a one. Uh, that would give me plus two health, but I'm already at 30 HP, which is where you start. So I'm going to simply reroll everything. There's nothing else I, nothing I really need there. And I pulled off two fives and two threes. So I'm gonna roll this four to try and get a, a, a four full, full house. There you go, come on. Nope, no dice. In this case, I wouldn't get anything and I'd pass my turn. However, if I got a five here, that is going to score me uh, five damage to my opponent if I had pulled off this, or if even a three would have worked as well. And they would simply take five damage. So if that happened, that's what would, you know, that's how much damage it'd take. And then fire Taco's turn. Uh, when he lands an attack, if a six is included, so let's go ahead and try and do an attack on the ancient taco. Oh, the nerdy taco, why not? All right, so we got two sixes, so we'll include that. And we'll roll these again. Only three rolls. And one more roll, and there's four of a kind with sixes. When a six is included in the final selection, this is the final selection of dice, he gets a draw an item card. Uh, you can change the number of any one die in play on my turn. So he will play this card here, and he will change the six into another six, and that will score him a uh, five of a kind, which is then going to do nine points of damage to this poor little taco here, putting this guy down to uh, 21 health. Pretty, pretty powerful. And he, of course, got to draw... Uh, an item card, so there you go. Uh, then the next player is going to get to go, which was Nerdy Taco. Maybe he's going to go back uh, and he's going to try and learn a skill. He'll take this one here and he'll place it just like this, showing that he's learning the first skill of his of his super secret face punch. And then, of course, it'll be the Zen Taco's turn. And uh, another card of these is going to pop out. And the Zen Taco is going to go ahead and roll against the Ancient Taco. And we got two fours, I guess. Let's go ahead and try and get another four. We do. That's three of a kind right there. And let's see if we can get four of a kind. We did. Four of a kind. Wow. I'm rolling pretty well in this game. In which case, uh, whenever he lands an attack, he can heal somebody, too. So he'll heal that guy, too. And then four of a kind. You go ahead and look, and it'll tell you you get to do four points of damage. So right now, this team is doing pretty well. Uh, after that, because this guy went first, this guy is now going to go first. And he can go ahead and choose if he wants to go back, and maybe he'll draw an, an extra item card. Um, now he's in the dojo, and then it'll be the Ancient Taco's turn. Maybe he will go back and learn a skill. And uh, another card's going to come out. This guy here, now he can choose to attack. And if he does, he, can attack, he attacks both of these guys because they're both in the dojo. So he's going to try and attack them to get as many points of damage on the team as possible. And, oh no! Oh, we did. We got three of a kind, which is going to do two damage to both of them because they're both in uh, the dojo. So that's pretty useful there. And then it'll be the Nerdy Taco. He'll learn his next attack, which which means on his next turn, he's going to come out and fight. And uh, what's basically going to happen, you get the idea, it's going to keep going back and forth. But what basically is going to happen was when these guys pop out, uh, if this guy were to attack, he's got this new card here, which says a four of a kind is going to do minus five damage. And then also you have this one here, which is a four of a kind is minus four. So you add them up and it'll do extra damage. So bonus damage. These spicy ones here are going to do minus two attack. It just depends on what they are. But what's interesting is you have cards like Melk here, which prevent all spicy damage done to you. Um, and you've got other things too. Do four damage to all tacos, add three damage to your landed attack, attack and then move. So all this kind of stuff, right? But the idea is simply you're going to go down uh, a track until eventually you're going to have your opponents hit zero. When that happens, the game is over. What's also interesting too is uh, when you get to 15 health, you cannot go past 15 health. You can't go, you can't gain health up to 16, 17, 18. You're going to stay there. So flipping the card over means you cannot flip back again. 
thing. Um, additionally, if you lose one of your tacos and he gets knocked out, basically, he's going to go back here. He can still choose. He can still try and heal from the afterlife. Or if you want, you can try and score a Yahtzee. And if you manage to do that, he's going to come back into the game. He'll come back into the game with, I think, 15 health or something like that. Uh, and he's brought back. It's really hard to get the Yahtzees, but if you can do that, it basically resummons your taco, which is very, very useful. And, of course, you get your, your health back. But you still are limited to the rule of not going past 15. And so that's the basic idea of the game. There's a bunch of different attacks, some of them spicy, some of them not. There's a bunch of different items that are going to do different things for you as well. Try to eliminate your opponent's tacos and then win the game of Taco Ninja Adventure. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So I think you guys have a good idea or a good grasp on how to play the game Taco Ninja Adventure and kind of what it's all about. Obviously eliminating your opponents and there's different variants of play based on the number of players, how many ninjas you're going to get, and how the turn order is going to go around. There's also two additional uh, tacos that I didn't really talk about. The first one being the Beefy Taco, which you get to add one damage to all of your base attack each time you roll a four of a kind, five of a kind, or a full house. You'll actually be utilizing an orange cube which will increase your damage every single time you, you get those uh, speci specific combinations. And the Sneaky Taco is whenever you land an attack and if a 1 is included in your selection, it will prevent 5 damage on the next attack done to you, which you'll use a cube on you to also signify that that is the case. Uh, there's a bunch of the different item cards, like you saw before I used a couple of them, the, the Milk, which prevents spicy attacks, Loco, which changes your die rolls, Hard Shell, which means you can roll twice, and if you get a 3 of a kind, you don't take any damage this turn, Toon Scoot, in addition to attacking, you can actually go back to the dojo and draw a card if you want, and an Eye for an Eye, damage done to you is also done to the ninja dealing damage to you. Uh, so that's the basic idea of the game, and there's different ninjas and different attacks that all come with the game. Um, so what do I think about it? Well, first of all, the artwork. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, I got two versions of the game. They're original one and uh, the newer one which is this one here which I'm showing you the original one is fine it's okay uh, but the way that it, it transitioned the artwork into this is is really really cool I like Magic the Gathering full art cards and this one has that appeal as well I would like to see more different types of artwork on the attack cards I don't want them to, they're all the same currently and I don't know if they're going to change or not but uh, hopefully the campaign uh, gets fun enough to the point where they're able to make different pieces of artwork for all the attack cards because I like the art and I think it's really cool how they did the full art aspects all the ninjas are cool and fun and they have their own unique abilities and whatnot I couldn't tell you if any of them are more powerful than than any others but they are all fun in their own way being able to heal when you're doing damage being able to increase your attack being able to dodge damage are all cool little aspects of the game they don't all they don't feel samey at all with the six different ninjas so that's important especially when there's uh, so only so many to choose from these bonus attack cards can be very useful but they're at the cost of not going to take going to take your turn but they can increase your damage by a good chunk of uh, of points provided you're able to utilize them uh, one thing that irritated me i suppose would be the milk prevents spicy damage to you but only certain cards are spi only certain attacks are going to be spicy based on if you learn them so i was sitting there with a lot of milk cards in my hand because my opponent didn't have any uh, of the spicy attacks i think it'd be probably cooler if they also did redirected the damage back to your opponent and also only the spicy damage is prevented so if you have a two attacks that are three of a kind that are three and four which is uh, seven damage plus two for spicy only the two that spicy is prevented so it should actually redirect that damage in my opinion uh, the way the game works as far as Yahtzee goes, it's fine. It's it's just like King of Tokyo and any other those other games. Um, nothing super unique about it. You're going to be able to save different dice that you want to keep, and you'll be able to, to re-roll the ones you don't want three times. But the way you utilize them and what attacks you have, what ninja you're utilizing is cool. And the fact that your opponents, if they go into the dojo and they're all there, you attack all of them at once, which means you should always have somebody fighting the way of the ninja. Without that, you're uh, basically setting yourself up for failure. Overall, it's a fun game. I like it because it feels like a light, even a, even more lighter version of King of Tokyo, and which are just utilizing cards. And uh, it's probably going to be a lower price point, which probably, would, I, I assume, which will be nice. It, I mean, I probably wouldn't pick up this game for more than 25 bucks as it stands here. I don't know what expansions or inclusions it's going to have in it, so don't mark my words there. But overall, it's a fun little game. It's enjoyable. Uh, the first two games we played were super, super close, which is really good and important in these kind of games. Because if it starts feeling like your opponents are always going to be over, more overpowered than you, it's not as fun. But we came down to really, really close situations, and I was going to potentially win the game, and then my opponent rolled a Yahtzee and brought one of his ninjas back and then decimated me so uh, Yahtzee's are very powerful in this game obviously and it's sometimes the lucky of the dice are just going to be in your favor this game is 
basically luck driven with the ability to select which die you want to utilize and then of course the cards make it a little less lucky based on the fact that you can use things like loco to change your uh, change your die numbers so overall the game is fun i enjoyed this game it was, it was something that was a, a lot cleaner and a lot more thought out than i was expecting it to be i suppose the artwork was a, a very very pleasing as well i enjoyed the style of artwork uh definitely check it out if it's something you'd be interested in taco ninja adventure currently on kickstarter in the description below if it's something that you think would be right for you all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if this interested you check it out on the kickstarter below one thing i want to say is they had discipline cards in the original set which basically changed your ninjas up start the game with three extra item cards once per game you may tell someone that they must skip their turn so basically these things uh, added even more change to your characters in unique ways i like these i want these to stay in the game so i'm just letting you know also go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek they give away tons of games have tons of great blog posts as well concerning the kickstarter stuff all right guys that's all i got this time and as always i look forward to taco ninja adventuring with you next time <laughs>